Hello. In this video, I want to give a perspective on Michael Porter's 2008 Harvard Business Review article, The Five Competitive Forces That Shape Strategy. It is, of course, a refresh of his famous 1979 article of the same name. Now, I'm not going to spend very long on the basics of the framework. It's well known and Porter himself has done a number of summaries. For a good one, see his Harvard Business Review interview, also from 2008. What I want to do is try to highlight some of the details that people often miss or potentially get wrong and as a result miss a number of the insights that this framework can provide. The framework is sometimes used in situations that is not appropriate. A bit like the old adage that if you've got a hammer, everything is a nail. If we start by looking at the central point of the theory. Firms are in competition for profits with a broader set of players than just its direct rivals. There is a tug of war going on between the industry and its suppliers and with its customers for the value that is generated in that production chain. The negotiation power of each determining the share of profits the industry retains. This is then influenced by the intensity of competition amongst rivals and the threat of new entrants or the availability of substitute products. These put a ceiling on the value that can be extracted. To higher price and new entrants are attracted or customers turn to substitutes as they feel they're not getting value for money. So that is it, five forces. Industry rivalry amongst existing players, bargaining power of suppliers, bargaining power of buyers, threat of new entrants, and threat of substitute products. But note, it's the bargaining power of the suppliers and customers and it's the threat of new entrants and substitutes. It's not their actual presence. Where these forces are intense, such as in airline industry, then the industry profitability is low. Where they are benign, then it is going to be high. So it is the industry structure we're looking at here, and it is assessing the medium to long term not short-run fluctuations due to business cycles or perhaps the weather. Now, while you may not be in a position to change the five forces or have the luxury of being able to move elsewhere, understanding the industry structure and so the root causes of industry profitability is critical to strategy and making choices. In developing this understanding, it is important that you fully analyse each force before jumping to an assessment. So understanding the underlying drivers for each force. For example, for threat of new entry, what are the barriers to entry? Perhaps the existence of economies of scale, network effects or switching costs for customers or perhaps access to distribution channels for the power of suppliers and buyers. These are mirror images of each other. What's the degree of industry consolidation? Is there product differentiation? What's the ability of either the players to vertically integrate backwards or forwards into the supply chain? And so bypass the industry itself. And for rivalry, drivers such as industry growth, high exit barriers, high fixed costs, and is the product perishable? If you are using the framework, make sure you get a full list of these driving factors and look at each in depth before you make an assessment of the force itself. 
elsewhere, Porter illustrates the danger of not doing this by looking at the case of British Oxygen Company, BOC, a supplier of industrial gases, these are oxygen and nitrogen, etc. By definition, these products are commodities and BOC has no control over raw material prices. These are traded commodities, so the prices fluctuate at the whim of the market. And as for BOC's buyers, they're some of the biggest companies in the world. So the instinct is to jump to a conclusion. Commodity industry, no power over raw material costs and selling to a lot of powerful companies. Sounds bad news. But actually, if you do the analysis properly, you will find that it is a very attractive industry. The way contracts work mean that raw material fluctuations are passed directly onto the buyer. And often the gas supply is built into the client's production facility. So switching costs and entry barriers are very high. So you need to have done a rigorous analysis to truly understand the issues in this industry and therefore the strategic opportunities. In the 2008 paper, Porter spends some time considering other factors that will influence industry structure, growth rates, new technology, governments, complementary products. Some of these have, by others, even been talked about as sixth forces. But Porter argues that these are factors that influence the five forces, not forces in their own right. For example, changes in technology impact on the threat of new entry, on substitute products and on supplier power. While deregulation may mean that buyers are less concentrated or allow new entrants and could also increase the intensity of rivalry. There's an important point here. Firms will often use a pest or pestle analysis to look at the macro environmental trends as part of their strategy process or as part of planning. But what Porter is implying here is that unless a macro trend or change impacts one or more of the five forces and so changes the industry structure, that trend will not influence the firm's profitability. Having this in mind is a good way to make any macro environmental analysis far more relevant to your decision making. Quite often, errors in the application of the five forces framework stem from failing to correctly define the industry the firm is in, drawing the scope either too narrowly or too broadly. Too broad a definition obscures differences between customers, products and geographic regions, while too narrow a definition overlooks linkages and sources of competition. Both will distort the assessment of the five forces and therefore the usefulness of the analysis. In the last part of the article, Porter considers the implications for strategy. From the outside in perspective of strategy that Porter champions, understanding the shape of industry competition has to be the starting point for strategy. This understanding then guides managers in terms of potential actions. Can the company be positioned to better cope with or negate current competitive forces? Can the firm anticipate and exploit shifts in the five forces? And is there potential to reshape the balance of the forces to create a more favourable industry structure? Looking at the first of these and positioning, the question is whether a firm can build defences against the competitive forces 
or can it find a position where the forces are at their weakest? Interestingly, in this article, Porter flags his developing thinking on what constitutes positions. Gone are generic strategies, and instead, as you see in many of his recent presentations, he talks about making a choice about which customers are served and which not, what needs and which not, and what is the relative price position being adopted. So three dimensions of choice in finding a strategic position. Now, the five forces analysis cannot be a one-off assessment. The forces will change and firms need to be alert to the effect on their strategic positions. This is the second area of actions about anticipating and exploiting shifts in the industry structure. The final area is possibly the one most neglected by managers, the potential to reshape the balance of forces in an industry. Too often, the external environment is seen as given to be endured rather than influenced. Porter argues, though, that industry structure can be shaped, and he suggests two ways this could happen. Firstly, redividing the profits generated in favour of incumbents by taking actions to neutralise competitive forces. For example, cultivating more suppliers to reduce supplier power, or more entwining customers, as BOC does, to counter customer power. Perhaps escalating R&D and marketing spend to deter new entrants. For the market leader, sometimes acting to improve the industry in this way is the most profitable opportunity. But take care, ill-advised changes can also undermine the industry structure and trigger new kinds of competition. Look at the effect that the focus on new business had in the introduction of direct insurance. The other way to change the structure is to seek to expand the industry profit pool. So more value is available to competitors, suppliers and value. Often this means working collaboratively across the supply chain to take out unnecessary cost or to agree quality standards that result in industry-wide improvements. But increasing the profit pool does not reduce the importance of the industry structure as determined by the five forces. And so the most successful companies seek expansion in ways that will benefit themselves rather than being purely altruistic. Porter finishes the article with some words of advice. Firstly, a strategist who understands that competition extends well beyond existing rivals is far better equipped to deal with threats. At the same time, thinking comprehensively about industry structure and the linkages between the forces can uncover opportunities that yield superior performance. In a world of open competition and relentless change, Porter stresses that it is important to focus on long-term change rather than short-term blips. Those long-term changes are reflected in the industry structure and so that should drive strategy. So, Porter's well-known Five Forces framework it's probably familiar, but maybe in this there are some reminders. I'm particularly struck by the observation that macro changes become relevant only when they influence the five forces. The other area that strikes me at this time is this need to think about the long term. I'm recording this video during the COVID-19 pandemic, an unprecedented time when 
I guess we're all thinking about what happens to our lives and businesses as we come out of lockdown. That need to think long term is going to be crucial. So maybe it is time to go back to the five forces and think about the underlying impact. What really will change in your industry structure? Thank you for listening.